So once we have those two GA3Ps, um, this is gonna bring us um, into something called the payoff phase. And if you can guess, payoff is gonna be something in energy, right? So let's just look at one GA3P at a time, um, and then we can figure out what goes on. So in the GA3P, we're gonna get something called 1,3-BPG, right? And this is even higher in energy than ATP. So at one time, um, I've seen them ask before that, you know, what's the highest energy molecule? Is ATP the high, highest energy conversion mo molecule? And the answer is no. 1,3-BPG is even higher. Pyruvate is even higher than that. Um, so if they ever ask you, is ATP the highest energy currency? That's not true. Um, so GA3P goes to 1,3-BPG. From there, we convert it into 3-PG, which is phosphoglycerate. 2-PG and then we're gonna go into something called PEP. This is a very important thing to remember and I'll actually draw it out because I think it's very important and pyruvate as well. So your end product is pyruvate um, and I'll just add in the intermediates of what we added in. So right here, we formed NADH. So this is one of our um, goals of glycolysis. And right here, if you could guess, we went from two phosphates down to one. So where do you think that extra phosphate went? Well, if you guessed this, you guessed it right. ADP is converted to ATP, um, and that's really it. There's also a water that comes out when we convert it to, to PEP. And so PEP, let me draw those two out. So PEP versus pyruvate, okay? These are our final two molecules, and those are the two that we actually have to remember. Um, I think these are very important to know. Um, so this is PEP. And so when we go from PEP to pyruvate, it's gonna look something like this. Okay, so th what this P is, if I didn't mention before, is P, oh, it's just an inorganic phosphate group, but attached on. Um, and so that's all you need to know, PEP versus pyruvate. And so what do we need to know that the final thing is the net reaction. This is probably the most important thing. If you don't remember anything, you need to remember this net reaction okay, for glycolysis. If you don't want to remember all the little details, you do need to remember this. So the net reaction is what? So let's just think about it. We started out with glucose, correct? Um, and then we ended up with two pyruvates, right? So that's pretty much the main gist of it. But let's think again. We had two ATPs that we created, um, and we also created two NADHs. Um, and in the process, these two are not as important. We also made two H plus and two H2O. Those are just more like byproducts, so they're not too important, but these three are very important. Um, and just to complete on the other side, if we had ADP form, these ADP have to come from something, so they're gonna come from ADP. And same thing with the NADH, they're gonna come from NAD plus. So that's the net reaction of glycolysis. Um, and what you need to know, after that is, well, once we have these pyruvate, what do we do? Okay, we have pyruvate, what can we do with it? Well, there's a couple of different things that we can do with it. There's three different pathways that they can go. So the first one is with oxygen. The second one is um, no oxygen, and we're gonna talk about in humans. No oxygen, and this is gonna be in like, for example, yeast. Um, so pyruvate can go all the way to ethanol. Um, pyruvate can also go to lactic acid, and that's found in our muscles. Um, with this, we'll show what exactly it goes down to, but the end product is CO2, um, but it also has a bunch of other things, um, namely 10 NADH, um, 4 ATP, and 2 FADH2 um, as a total. And so this will give you something we'll see later, but for now we'll just leave it like this. But for ethanol and lactic acid, let's talk about that for a minute. So let's figure out what's the reason why we even converted pyruvate to ethanol. And so there's a reason why. We have this NADH. Remember from pyruvate, we had these NADH molecules. Um, well, those are electron donors. So now we need to, in order to reform glycolysis, you know, when we don't have any oxygen, we have to get we have to keep repeating glycolysis over and over again because that's all we have, 
right? But we have, we need these NAD pluses, right? Remember in glycolysis, we had that step between um, GA3P and 1,3BPG, we converted NAD plus to NADH. So if you don't have any NAD plus, you can't complete glycolysis. So the reason why we convert pyruvate to ethanol is because now it can give us this NAD plus, it regenerates it. And the same thing happens for um, pyruvate to lactic acid. We're going to have that same NADH to NAD plus conversion. So the main goal is just reforming NAD plus when we don't have any oxygen. All right. But let's see, if we want to go actually with, with oxygen, the pyruvate, what happens to it? Okay. So let's see, pyruvate, um, we'll go, let's see, we have two pyruvate from one glucose molecule. So two pyruvate um, in the PDC complex, which is the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, um, it's going to form two acetyl-CoA, okay? And this is a precursor to uh, vitamin, and also it's going to form two NADH. And so always keep track of how much we have. Um, and so this 2-acetyl-CoA will go now into something called the TCA or Krebs cycle. You guys probably remember this. The TCA or Krebs cycle, um, the end product will be CO2, but along the way we'll form 6-NADH, 2-ATP, 2-NADH, or sorry, 2-FADH2. Okay, so we have these products, um, and so after all this, what do we do with NADH and FADH2? Well, let's count it up. So our total, our net, so we have number of NADH. Well, we have six um, from the TCA cycle. We have two from acetyl-CoA from the PDC cycle. But remember, we also have two from glycolysis, right? FADH2, well, we only have two just from the TCA cycle. ATP, we actually have four because we have two from uh, the TCA cycle. And we also have two from glycolysis. And so... Keep track of these numbers. We have 10 NADH, 2 FADH2, and 4 ATP. So now, once we have these NADH, so we had 10 of them, and we had two of these, and we had um, 4 ATP. Um, and so in something called the electron transport chain, um, what's gonna happen is this gonna happen in the mitochondria. And so this is in the matrix and you're gonna have this NADH and FADH2. And so what's gonna happen is, we're gonna have something that converts this NADH um, now into NAD+, and so now we're gonna lose an electron, and we're gonna also gonna lose that hydrogen. And so all these NADH will make this gradient inside the, the membrane have very positive H+. Um, and so all these H+, will go into something called ATP synthase which will convert ADP to ATP. So this hydrogen will create a proton motive force um, and then cause you to form ADP to ATP. And so what's the conversion factor? Well, this is what you need to know. One NADH will make 2.5 ATP. One FADH2 will make 1.5 ATP. So now if we remember this, we can just go over and we say this NADH will make 25 ATP, right? Because 10 times 2.5. This FADH2 will make 3 ATP. And remember from before we had 4 ATPs. So our net total is 32 ATP when we have oxygen. That's the most important thing. So 32 ATP is what's the net result um, after oxidative uh, metabolism. You know, go through glycolysis then the PDC, TCA, and now electron transport chain. And so that's pretty much all you need to know um, for the MCAT in, order, uh, in terms of metabolism.